Uh, hi, I'm Joost. Uh, I'm the co-founder and CEO of uh, Close Alert. I'm also uh, since 2012 an Ember user, and since a little bit more recently, I contribute a little bit to uh, Ember CLI. Uh, first of all, a little bit about Close Alert. We are in our lovely uh, offices here. Uh, we're a company that uh, works mostly for marketing people, making it really easy to use qualitative data in marketing. So uh, we make it really easy to collect qualitative data like messages and uh, transform it into customer information. Um, first of all, a little bit about Ember CLI, because Ember Twiddle, which I'll be talking about, was formed because of Ember CLI. I th how many of the people here are using Ember CLI? That's awesome, like half a year ago, <laughs> it was like 50% less. So that's really good. Uh, yeah, Ember CLI, for those of you who don't know it, it's really awesome. It gives you, uh, it's basically build tooling for Ember. It gives you ES6 modules out of the box. It gives you code generation out of the box. Uh, your, it's your build pipeline. It's, it's something you definitely want to use if you uh, want to move forward with Ember. Um, but because we use ES6 modules a lot in Ember CLI, um, we've lost something that we call Ember Globals mode, which means that everything Ember does is registered on the window. So uh, you had like an app dot application controller, which was registered on the window. Um, and because we used, uh, we don't no longer have globals. We can also no longer use stuff like a JS bin or JS fiddle, because they don't support multiple files. And with the loss of using JS bin and JS fiddle, you kind of lose the ability to easily share Ember code, which is a real pain and something that, uh, yeah, it's, it's something we definitely want to solve. Um, so, a while ago I started looking into some options like what can we do to, to mitigate this. Uh, the first that comes to mind is like, okay, we'll just clone JSBin, but that's a lot of work and not really attractive. Uh, another option is to make some sort of export to export an Ember CLI app into globals mode, but that's kind of tricky. Um, and the final option, which is the one uh, I'm going for here, <laughs> is to use someone else's persistence layer, which means you don't have to write a complete backend, but you just do some Ember magic on the front end. Sorry, but what is yes bin? Uh, you know yes fiddle? Yeah, 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 we know that, but I don't know yes bin. It's exactly the same as yes fiddle. Is it pronounced JS bin? JS bin? Did I say yes? Yeah. yeah oh, we're, we're Dutch. <laughs> we're Dutch. <laughs> I'm Dutch, dude. <laughs> Uh, JSBin, yeah, uh, uh, JSBin is, is, is basically the same as JSFiddle, but they both uh, have, like, typically these editors have like a, a JavaScript column and an HTML column and an output column. Um, but because you have modules with Ember CLI, you actually need multiple JavaScript uh, columns, which is not possible, so you have to do all kinds of hacks to get uh, Ember CLI working in, uh, in stuff like JSBin. Which sucks. Oh, okay. So yeah, may, you may have not run into it yet. No, but I, I remember now what it is. It's, yeah, it's just an online application where you can put your code in and uh, yeah, right. It's basically I can just uh, for those of you, <laughs> this is JS. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you put your code there and there and there, and then you have output, Sorry. and you can just run it, and you'll get output. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, does this work? Yeah, Apparently not here. Uh, it's not yeah, there. We go. So it works through the yeah. yeah, I I don't know. There's I think there's a blur on the beam. I don't know what it is. Your yeah, yeah, cable is good connected. Or? Yeah, just leave it like this. It's fine. Might be the screen. Uh, okay. <laughs> but um, yeah. So hello. <laughs> there goes the surprise. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so um, I was going for the option of using another persistence layer and just writing a skin on it. And I started playing with that and I thought, well, GitHub has something called Gists. I don't know if you know that, how many people have ever used a Gist on GitHub? Okay, so I don't have to explain that, I guess. Um, so my idea was, yeah, you basically create your Ember app in a Gist and then uh, we'll work some magic to display output of that Gist. So I started hacking on that and I created something like this, which you have a gist here and it renders an app here. 
So that, like it works, it's extremely hacky, but it works. And uh, this is actually just a running end graph. I can do stuff here and it will work. Uh, so that works, um, but it's, it's really hacky. It's not, not like well documented at all. Uh, it's not maintainable, uh, it uses 1200 hacks. Um, so that wasn't something I would want to go forward with. So then um, I got pinged like, hey, you should talk to Alex Peller because he's working on something really similar called Ember Twiddle, um, which I checked out and it looks something like this. Uh, it's an Ember CLI app and it basically you can create your Ember CLI files here and you'll get your output there. So you can really easily mock up an app if you want to demo something like I have a component which is behaving oddly or anything. Um, so yeah, the awesome thing about Ember Twiddle is it's an Ember CLI app. Uh, so you basically have some sort of like Emberception of creating an Ember CLI app with an Ember CLI app, uh, which I really like. Um, it's done by uh, uh, hacking together a custom resolver, um, which load, dynamically loads like your editor files. Um, and the vendor code, so Ember, uh, all framework code is basically shared between the parent app and the child app. So the app you're creating shares the same Ember version as the app that is running it. And it supports uh, uh, Babel and Handlebars and everything out of the box. So I talked to Alex and I was like, okay, can we do this? What would be the plan? Because Twiddle with the GIST backend sounds awesome. Uh, so we need to connect it to a GitHub API. We need to set up authentication for the GitHub uh, uh, API. And then we need to basically prettify it a little bit because it didn't really look friendly at the first point. Um, so uh, these things, connecting to the GitHub API, that was actually really easy. You write uh, 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 custom adapters and serializers for Ember Data, and that Ember Data handles the rest. So we just have a, a gist model, we have a gist file model, and we have a gist revision model and they all work, so every gist has a couple of gist files and gist revisions which gives you your code. I think this is pretty understandable. Um, so that was the first part, that was done with Ember Data. Then the authentication, we used two uh, Ember uh, libraries for that, which pretty much provided that out of the box as well. Uh, the Tori library is client-side and it gives you wonderful uh, OAuth support. Um, but because the GitHub API needs uh, like a, 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 a secret exchange, which needs to happen on the back end, we also use something called Gatekeeper um, that like handles a little bit of the auth authentication logic. And that actually has a deploy to Heroku button. You hit that and you fill in your application key for GitHub and then it just runs and you don't have to do anything anymore. So that was, this was half an hour of work which was really awesome as well. And then to printify all the things, um, I called the Close Alerts designer, Kevin, uh, and asked him, like, please <laughs> do some work for us. Uh, and he, uh, he uh, made a, made a ver first version, um, which I would like to demo now. So, this is the same gist as you just saw in my uh, crazy uh, Ember gist. Um, but now we have actually a decent looking uh, layout around it. Um, and here you can basically edit anything. And the app just works. <coughs> you can also add files, like I could add a component to it. So I now have a foo component. And I can also use that. Dash. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thankfully, I've also built in a rename function. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so that actually works. Um, now this is, uh, I'm now not, not logged in, so I cannot save this. If you go to the file menu, there is no save button. 
But I can create a new Twiddle, and then I will uh, demo the Tori functionality. It will open a GitHub pop-up. I'll just say <coughs> authorize. And it will take a while, because Heroku is not giving me a lot of performance now. It will take, yeah, there we go. So now I'm signed in, and I can say, uh, I can save it to a gist. And now if I click here, there it is. So that's uh, Ember Twiddle. Like the most of the difficult code was uh, the, the, the module system was done by Alex Peller. A lot of credits to him. We're also looking at like, okay, how can we improve on this? Because we ultimately want to be able to embed this and stuff like the Ember guides. Uh, we want to support routing because it's not supported yet. Uh, we want to support CSS, maybe add a file tree so you can easily navigate. Uh, and ultimately also have multiple Ember versions so you can like pick what Ember version you want to make your twiddle in and that's it. So, any questions? Cool. When will all the outdated examples on the guides uh, will be replaced with Ember Twiddle? Uh, <laughs> that's not really up to me. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, I, uh, if, if we get this a bit further, uh, I hope that, uh, that it will be adapted for the, for the guides. So I'll definitely push for it. <laughs> cool. Is this, when are, when are you guys going to actually deploy it somewhere that can be used by the community? Uh, right now it's uh, uh, <coughs> deployed at a URL in my domain, but um, my pref I would prefer to basically have this hosted on uh, on like twiddle.emberjs.com and just have it available for everyone. So I think I would have to ping someone in your team for that. <laughs> you have to, it has to be finished first and be like production quality before we can like put it up as an update. Yeah, but the, so like we have a, a V1 milestone uh, and for example tests are part of the V1 milestone. And uh, uh, I hope that we can get some more work done uh, uh, this month and maybe next month and then have it up. Any other questions? Okay, so if you have, like, I will put the URL to the, like, the beta, beta, alpha version uh, up on the meetup page. And uh, also this URL where you can submit any issues or any requests you have because we'd love, like, feedback. Uh, Really funny, I actually forgot the URL to the working version on this slide. Um, but I'll put it all up on the meetup page, and if you have any questions or feedback, please ping me. Thank you.